thermal sound wave wave. It's thermal sound waves, a natural alternative to uh-huh. fast food radio track life radio WLGK. We here, man. C Truth, Kev Lawrence. We got a guest that's Kev. joining us right now. You know what I mean? Um, don't make him mad, though. See, don't he's uh, no. Nah, I'm not gonna make him mad. I'm not gonna. Mad. Are, are you still mad though? <laughs> You already know, baby. You already know, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, man. We got none other than, man, the mad rapper himself on here, you know what I'm saying, along with D-Dot, you know what I'm saying, producer extraordinaire, Grammy up, o- Award up? winning. I got to put that in there. Yes, you yes, got You got Grammys and awards and all those those things, so I, I can't, like, you know, not put that in there. You know, it's th- what up, fellas? What up? What up? Everything's good. We here. We, we we with our with our fam. You know, Sean Williams. You know what I'm saying? Um, sneaker obsession and all that. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Tilden fam. All right. Tilden fam. You okay. know what I mean? Oh, okay, okay. What up? What up? Yeah. Tilden Brooklyn style. Exactly. Shout exactly. out to Tilden because I was going to drive down Flatbush. I was like, why drive down Flatbush? I can drive down Bedford. And pass Tilden and avoid the traffic. But shout out to Tilden because it helped me avoid traffic when I was in Brooklyn the other day. Tilden ain't on Bedford. All right, all right. No, but when you pass, when you're on Bedford, it's not on Bedford though. I didn't say it's on Bedford. Yeah. You could pass it though. Nah, Tilden Avenue crosses Bedford. Yeah, that's what I'm right. talking about. I thought you were talking about Tilden High School. Yeah, but he, he well, talking, I'm talking about Tilden High School. Yeah, we talking about Tilden High School though, son. Yeah. Don't leave me right there. Yeah. No doubt, no doubt. Yeah, man. So. Um, there's a lot of things we can get to, a lot of places you want to go to, but uh, are you still moving on them though, son? You already know, baby. Two kings in a cipher. <laughs> a lot of people don't know that. Now, now whoa, whoa, whoa. You know, people, I, I think you should actually break that down. Yeah, so yeah. We, 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 people, people know you from, of course, Mad Rapper, producer, Hitman, Bad Boy, all that, you know, producing Benjamins, Hypnotized. Mr. Benjamins. You know what I mean? Like, just, just <laughs> crazy hits that are classics right now that, you know, are still getting burned, still getting run. So I, I know right. you got them publishing checks. That's crazy, but we ain't gonna talk about you that. Already know, you that's already know, you already know, baby. You're talking about that. But you started out though uh, with your homie Amon Ra in a group called Two Kings in the Cipher. Shout out to Amon Ra. Absolutely, absolutely. Down, down in DC. Absolutely. From well, that. you know me and me, me and Ron Lawrence. We, Ron is from Queens. I'm from Brooklyn. Mm-hmm. I was rapping in Brooklyn before I got to Howard. I used to run around with DJ Clark Kent. Shout out to Clark Kent. Yes. Um, you know, because he's from Brooklyn and from around my hood. And, um, you know, I was one of the rappers that Clark used to take around and go battle people around around the city right. when I was in high school. Mm-hmm. And then I rapped with my man, um, my man Kenny. We was a group called Ebony and Ivory. And then I was a part of a group called Ultra Death Defiant MCs in Brooklyn. So I was rapping all that. When I got to Howard, I kind of gave it up because it just didn't look like it was going to happen. So I was trying to play football and do all that. And then Ron Lawrence approached me one day because I used to, rap outside in front of you, know, bang on tables, you know, the regular. Mm-hmm. And Ron said, let's do something. So, you know, when you're at Howard, you get that conscious bug, you know what I'm saying? And that was around that time, you know, 88, 89, right. 90, we start getting that conscious bug. So, Isn't that, that's you know, the, we uh, start, that's the uh, do the right thing school. Right, you know what I'm saying? So well, both of us dabbled in the 5% nation. Both of us was at school God. studying, studying peace, studying. So, you know, we said, Let's show the evolution of us going from the pyramids to the projects. So we formed this group, Two Kings and a Cypher, named our album Pyramids and Projects. We dropped the album in 1990. We both went to Howard University. That's where we met. We met at Howard University in 1986. So we dropped our first record in 1990, moving on them, dropped the album 91, had that what they call critical acclaim, you know what I'm saying? Right, right. But we didn't really do much, so they dropped us. It was still so, critical, though. It was still critical. Yeah, though. it was still critical. Yeah. You know, it, it, put our, it, put our, it put our feet in the game. You know, people knew us. They knew we was nice. They knew we had talent. So Ron went on to stay in D.C., and I moved to New York. Ron ended up moving to L.A., producing for Shy. Um, the R&B group, did their own second yes. album, yep, okay. because they went to Howard. Nice. So Ron produced for them. Now, hold and on, I went hold to on. New York and... To right. time, we we got to slow this down a little bit because there's a lot of information. Not saying, too much, though. Not too much, though. I, I, I slow I, down a little bit, but not too. Much. I want to. I don't want to mess with his flow, but shout out to Howard University. Yeah, le- Howard legendary. University is the greatest. Baby. The real, the, the real HU. Oh, easy C, easy C. The real HU. But they have Hampton University people get mad at us. Chill, they they chill, always, chill. they they already. I don't care. I could care less. I don't, <laughs> care. <laughs> I don't care. No, the reason why I say that also is because at one point. You know, D.C. was like, if you're not in New York, New Jersey, D.C. was like like a part of that. that 
Yeah. Well, DC was line. DC was heavy. DC was heavy in the crack game in the eighties. Remember, I was out there from eighty six to ninety. You know, the crack game was eighty three to eighty two to eighty seven, eighty eight, eighty nine. And we was right Rayful, in the middle of it. You know what I'm saying? Rayful, M- so, right, right, right. Coach Thompson then, you know, at Georgetown, he was a pivotal Right, all that, all that stuff was going on, you know what I'm saying? Um, so, um, you know, so Howard was putting out, you know, little did we know that three mayors, uh, uh, senators, you know, music moguls, Grammy Award winning producers, songwriters, Puppets, poets. Puffy. Mm-hmm. You know, executives yes. with all in that group That's crazy. of people that we all got together, and you know, we were all destined for greatness. But Howard was that catalyst for all us to meet there, exchange ideas, exchange, exchange philosophies, ideologies. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Learn a lot. We were students and leaders all at the same time. You know On what I mean? On the yard. On the yard. Because when you look at the music uh-huh. from back then, like people like Heavy D, LL Cool J. They all did hip hop, yeah, but they Zappa, also had Rakim, they also Rakim. had the uh, the go go music too. So DC was just a yeah. very pivotal point. Go go was things. heavy. Go go was heavy there. You know, our engineer that engineered our first album was in the go go band. His name was Funky Ned. You know what I mean? And he was in the go one of the pop, most popular go go bands out there. So he engineered the whole Two Kings and the Cipher album for us, recorded wow. it for us. You know nice. what I'm saying? So yeah, so that's how much we had that we had that vibe going on between Go Go and Hip Hop. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Shout exactly. DC, Maryland, Virginia, the whole DMV. It's thermal sound yeah. waves, the natural alternative to fast food radio. We here with Mad Rapper D Dot Derek Angeletti with Brooklyn. us. Yes, indeed. BK stand up. That's what it is, man. Now the Bronx. So I just want to put it out there. Just want to put it out there for the Bronx. Yeah. Okay. No, no, I ain't know you just did that. I no, no, you kind of no, did that in a way like it was like it was what you're trying to say. <laughs> I'm from the Bronx, just to be exact. You know what I mean? Just, just want to keep that out there. I, I'm just, I'm just saying. I just want to put it out there. That's all. All right, cool. All right, D-Dot, just want to put it out there, D-Dot. Just chill, chill. All right, cool. Yeah. yeah. But um, peace, peace. <laughs> so, hey, peace. you know, people know you as as an artist, a producer, and all that. But you right. also was a manager and a show booker. Now, how did how did you get into that area of entertainment? I mean, it all came from Two Kings and a Cypher. You know, we hit the road. We was on the road with some of the greats, UGK and, and leaders of the new school, Tribe Core Quest, wow. Poor Righteous Teachers, Brand Nubians, you know, p- right, p- right. Public Enemy, you know, uh, Chuck D and, and Flav and them was our OGs, you know what I'm saying? Um, Teddy Ted and Awesome too, you know, and and, and, yep. and they, they, mm-hmm. they was our, they was our, you know, Ed OG was out around that time. So we had a chance to hit the road. Right. So, and I'm, you know, <clears throat> I'm just a hustler by nature, you know what I mean? So when I got down there, I exchanged numbers with everybody, you know, the, the, the cooks in the kitchen when I needed my weed. I ain't know nobody, so you call the cooks in the kitchen. You know, they know what's going on. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm, I'm speaking to the record promoters. I'm speaking to the club owners and people. So when Two Kings of the Cypher got dropped and we was kind of in limbo, I needed to get a hustle on. So, you know, I found ways of speaking to the same artists and like, yo, I can get you down here in North Carolina. My man does the club here, you know, does this, do that, you know, yada, yada, yada. And I just kept building up my Rolodex. You know, that's what we called it back in the days, your Rolodex. You know what I'm saying? Not your contact list. Right. It was your Rolodex, you <laughs> yeah. know what I'm saying? It exactly. was your Rolodex, you know what I'm saying? So I'm just, I just built up my Rolodex and people less like my hustle. You know what I'm saying? They just like how I deal with people. You know, I'm no nonsense, you know what I mean? And I, I, got, I got schooled by some great people on my come up, you know what I mean? So... A lot of people gave me the gave me some lessons on my way up. So you know, shout out, I can't name them all, but they right. know who they are. And you know, and I give homage to the people that I I was able to steal from, if you know what I'm saying, because they yeah. gave me free jewelry. You know what I mean? <laughs> exactly. So was yeah. was um was Clarence Avant one of those people by any chance? I definitely, I definitely got yeah. God bless him. I definitely had the opportunity to sit with him. Yeah. I had the ch- chance to sit with him, but not in a real OG sense, like. You know, I just was in the room with him, you know, told him who I was. He was, you know, just giving me congratulations and just dropped a quick jewel, you know, just told me to stay focused, you know, and, and like he did everybody else, just if I we if I ever needed, give him a call. You right. know what I mean? But I was never I was never in that circle like that yet, you know what I mean? But I did get a chance to meet him, shake his hand and, and pay homage, you know. Right, right. And for those who don't know who Clarence Avon is, y'all need to check out that documentary on Netflix, The Godfather, yeah. to find out yeah, who yeah. he is. And how influential that dude is. Not right? Avon Boxdale yeah. from Baltimore. Clarence Avon. Right, right, right. 
<laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And right. uh, you you were you were managing Mary J. Blige at one point. Yeah. So yeah. So that's you know I I, I was I was rushing through. So I was letting y'all guide it. But so so one of my hustles was you know when my when my rap when my rap thing ended. Puff I got simultaneously dropped from Bad Boy. I mean, from Uptown Records. From Andre Harrell. Right. So he got dropped. Right. So, so um, he was searching for his deal. Yada yada yada. So after he got his deal, I moved back home to New York, and Mom's. I had to move back to Mom's crib, and Mom's was like, "Well, you know, you got to work. You can't be doing what them cats are doing. Mark and Harv and Nasheem and all of them, Groovy Lou, and the whole squad was living in Puff's crib." putting in that bad boy intern work you know what i'm saying they was mm-hmm. putting it in like real heavy like you know what i mean that's how bad boy got built or chuck bone you know off those people's shoulders you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. and and kurt burroughs and all of them so i wasn't able to do that because i had to go make bread so i had a, i had to go get a regular job so puff used to invite me out so i i saw one day he was giving away t-shirts for free and i was like free the way they going crazy for these joints. So I begged them, I begged Harv one day to let me get a batch of them and show them what I could do with them. Sell them. To all them intern dudes. So he gave me like 500 shirts. And I gave them to the interns that wasn't getting no money. And I told them all, I'll give you all $5 off a shirt. You sell them for $20, $20. Give me back, I mean $25. Give me back, no. I told them, give me $7. I give them $7. And they give me back the rest. Mm-hmm. And I did it. I sold all 500 of them. Nice. Broke Harv ball for some money. And walked in the club and handed Puff some cash. He said, "What's this?" I said, "It's from me selling the t-shirts." He said, "What t-shirts?" I told him what I did. He told Harv to make me two thousand. <laughs> <laughs> so I sold it's all two thousand. That Hernandez move, <laughs> right, right, right. I sold all two thousand of them. I sent dudes to the Bronx, to Brooklyn, to all the major spots downtown Brooklyn, to the Grand Concourse of the Bronx, and to the Jamaica Avenue, Not the Queens Grand Concourse. Or wherever, wherever they, wherever was popping back then, you know what I'm saying? Wherever was popping, right. I sent them there. Harlem, 125th, so and they you were like them Ozark. Out. You were like the TV show Ozark. Right, the, right exactly. The drug laws so, coming through. Like you gonna sell all this stuff out here. So one day, one day we was in the office late night, like nine, ten o'clock at night, and we heard a bang on the door. Puff came in. It was like, "Yo, I want to talk to you." I was like, "What's up?" He said, "Yo, I don't, and I, mind you, I'm only coming there after work, so I don't work for Bad Boy. I'm just." coming in there after work doing all this because I've still got a job. And he said, yo, what you think about managing Mary J. Blige with me? Like, out of nowhere. Okay. Because he because he needed somebody out there like him. Right. That was going to be her to him. And so I said, yeah. And from 94 to 96, I was Mary J. Blige's manager out there for two years on the road. It's like, out of nowhere. So still making beats, though, while I'm on the road. That's mm-hmm. how we got to do the MC Light joint, the Rakim joint. So that's how I got in. Right. Heavy, you know what I'm saying? So I never actually worked for him. Okay. You know what I'm saying to you? And then when I came to work for him, that wasn't until 96 when the Hitman started. So did you did you teach Mary J. Blige to do that kick? <laughs> Not at all, baby. Mary J. Blige is one of a kind, baby. That's one of a kind, man. And shout out to the Hitman those producers shout out to Charlemagne also because Charlemagne used to tell me about them as well one of them was living in yeah. I forgot the guy I love name. Charlemagne I love Charlemagne yeah. Charlemagne I'm talking about the real dude. Charlemagne too nothing against the Charlemagne that's on yeah 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 yeah. Fortress what Entertainment up? from the Bronx baby Fortress Entertainment yes yes shout out to him shout out to Mr. Red also because he was doing some yes. production work as well but uh mm-hmm. those are you're a key person in just the evolution of a lot of hip hop and hip hop culture now. Well, I appreciate that. I mean, I mean, I keep it real. I was taught by the best, so my my thing is teaching the best. I, I my my claim to fame is D. Dot Angeletti is being around before the public get to hear these dudes, putting them through putting them through the chambers, as the Wu Tang called it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. And so, especially when the Benjamins came out. Right. I, I think the the hit was so hard. It was. It's still a problem now. I when appreciate you just that, man. That's that just a blessing. Just hear That's it. just a blessing. Yeah. I did that beat in Trinidad. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> oh, so you had some Pilores and some bus ups what? before you. Okay, bye. Was oh, it during bye. Carnival? Was it right, during Carnival? Right. Right. I did that beat in Trinidad. We went, 
we went on a beat sabbatical. Puff took me, Stevie J, himself, Ron Lawrence, Carlos Stevie Brody, J's. Nasheen Myrick. Mm-hmm. He o- took us out to Trinidad for, for a month. Nice. And we went and made his album, Biggie's album. That's where most of the beats came from. I think Jay Delgado from when we went to Trinidad. Too. Now, is that... Oh, is that Jay Delgado? Nah. Yeah, he was at... Jason Delgado was like Puff's assistant around then. Yeah. He was like, yeah, 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 yeah. Now, is that both of Biggie albums or just the... Um, the not nah, Life After Death. The second Life one. After okay, death. the second Life one. Life After Death, yeah. Got it, got it. Now, how did yeah. the whole Mad Rapper, like, alter ego come about? Like, was it a situation where you were actually... Where, where what you were talking about was real? Where there were there was some situations where you weren't getting what you felt you were supposed to be getting, and you just started flipping. Nah, nah. The, the mad rapper. <laughs> the, mad, yeah. the, the mad, the mad rapper came from from the East Coast West Coast beef. We were sitting in the studio one night, and one of the interns came banging on the door because back then, when videos was shown, you know, like you knew when they was coming on, like. They would call a record company, your video is going to play at this time, this time, this time. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So one of the interns said the new Tupac video was about to come on. With You know what I mean? Right. So we, we turned it on, and it was the Hit em Up video. So mm. it threw us for a loop. Like, right. you know what I'm saying? Like, that shit threw us for a crazy loop. Like, we sitting there like, oh, shit. Like, we ain't bothering nobody. We about getting this money. We trying to make records. And we like, oh, shit. So, you know, like. The shit was kind of crazy, so our first reaction, of course, was let's go make some records and go at these niggas. Right. But, you know, as real as we are, because, you know, you know the stories amongst everybody individually, what they got going on from the Hitmen to Biggie to D-Rock to Puff to everybody got those street connections, if you know what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know what you're saying. So, right, so... Rest in peace of Wolf. Right, right. So, um... But we don't want to play there. That's not that's not the playground we want to play in. We want to play in this get money playground. We want to play in this history playground. We want to play in that. That fly, you know, get that money, take care of your family. That's where we want to play. Mm-hmm. So we decided not to attack that way. So we had to figure out another way to attack. Now, mind you, here I am, a former artist, sitting in the middle of all of this. I'm coaching MCs how to be MCs. I'm making records for other MCs. I'm making records for other producers. This is my way in, again, in, as an artist. <clears throat> I got something that's going to fuck these niggas up. I got it. So I grabbed the studio manager. His name is Trevin Jones, who's on the radio to this day because of the Mad Rapper. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Trevin Jones. And I grabbed the front desk girl. Her name was Shay. That was her real name. Oh, okay. And I brought them in the room, and I said, I got an idea. I'm going to do a talk show. That's great. And I'm going to be mad (laughs) at Bad Boy. Okay. Okay. (laughs) But not no names. Look at Shiny Sue. Right. Right. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, <laughs> I got it. I got it. We, we, uh, leave it to me, son. I got it. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I got the whole thing. You know what I mean? I got, I got the whole thing. Just leave, it, was leave it to me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so, and Trevin really talked like that, and Shay really talked like that. That's why I grabbed him. That wasn't them pretending. That's Trevin's real voice. Good afternoon, fellas. How are you? Today? Right. That's how he talks. And Shay was like, good morning, how y'all doing? What's up, D-Dot? You got five messages, your wife called. You know, that's how she really talked. Shay uh-huh. went on to become vice president of Jive Records, A&R, marketing, and all that other stuff. Nice. Trevin went on to be on the radio, WBLS, and stations around the country. So it worked for everybody. So that's yeah. how the Mad Rapper came up. And actually, it was five minutes, it was like four minutes long. We chopped it for the album, but there's a lot more to it. I had somebody else ask another question. I went in on them. So, you know, maybe one day that shit might come out on Bad Boy Greatest Hits or something. You hear the rest of it, you know what I mean? Right. You know, during that time, you were so pivotal that you actually, it could have been some before you, not saying it wasn't any before you, but you made it cool to listen to skits on albums. Well, maybe. I, 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 You know, I appreciate that. That's love. I'm always a humble dude. Like, people expected to hear the skits. my, My inspiration 
for the, for that was I love to laugh, so obviously I'm, I love comedy. So the the Richard Pryor, the Eddie Murphys, all them type of dudes. But you know, De La Soul to me is one of the greatest groups ever, and Prince Paul to me, the way they mm. and and combined the way they put their albums together was entertaining to me. Absolutely, you know what I mean. It, it, it took away from the song, 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 song. You know, the standard way of listening to records, and then <clears throat> Dr. Dre and them. They did a great job of 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 skits, you know what I'm saying? So so me, I just felt like I can combine all of that together. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Yes. So yeah. So, so yeah, and and we made the mad rapper a continuous thing. Like we, like people look forward to hearing it on the Bad Boy albums because you didn't know what the fuck I was going to say. Right. You know what I mean? Like you got the check dog, like you know what I mean, shit like that, or nah, son, nah, 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 you ain't giving my shit, you know what I mean, like, right. you know what I mean, shit like that, you know what I mean, like, like it was, it was like real, real brothers, like it felt like we was really brothers, like it felt yeah. like we defend each other, but we argue, you know what right. I'm saying, like, yeah. yeah, I mean, people thought I was, people thought I was trying to be premier when I first did it, like. You know, like I was like Premier was a like mad producer, and I was like, no, that's disrespectful. It wasn't geared towards nobody. It was just the concept of hating on niggas for no reason. Like there are people out there that just hate, mm -hmm. and I was making fun of them. Now, you know, you mentioned during, I guess, Death Row or Tupac had anything going on, and the East and the West Coast beef. Is it true that uh, Biggie did see Tupac before? I don't know if he was around him, but he saw Tupac before and said, you know, what's the problem? And Tupac was like, nah, this is all just for entertainment. We really don't have any beef. I mean, I wasn't there for that. I mean, I've heard that story as well, but I can't speak on it because, I, you know, I wasn't there. So, I, no, I, I don't have an answer to that, unfortunately. You know what I mean? Um, I, was, I, I can speak on things that I was there for. You know what I mean? And so, <clears throat> you know, I know for a fact from being there that, you know, it, it, it wasn't what the what it came out to be. I know that much. How much of it was real, how much of it wasn't, that I don't have a measuring stick for. You know what I'm saying? I do know some of the parts that weren't real. <clears throat> how big of the puzzle it was to the bigger picture, I don't know. I mean, bigger piece it was to the bigger picture, I don't know. But, you know what I mean? Right, right. Yeah, um, so I do, know, I do know what wasn't real. I do know that. And I know there was no beef. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, gotcha. we, had, right. we had no problems with nobody. So that... I usually beef is two people. I'm assuming, but there was no, there was no disagreement. Our disagreement was why, why are you disrespecting us for no reason? You know that was our, right? You know that was that was all we was worried about. We wasn't bothering nobody. <clears throat> yes, indeed. It's thermal sound waves, a natural alternative to fast food radio. We here with uh, the mad rapper D Dot, yeah, yeah. Derek yeah, Angeletti, yeah, <laughs> doing yeah. this thing. The legend continues, man. With legend. the bad rapper, the legend continues. I appreciate the that. Man, I appreciate and hypnotized. That. Exactly. So, yeah. um, tell us what you've been doing recently, like with your company, Connect the Dots, and you know, as a businessman, uh, being an executive producer on some uh, TV and some film projects. Right. I appreciate that. Um, well, you know, like I said, the the beauty of being in the game and getting schooled and schooling is that you make a lot of good relationships. So over the years, I started my company, Connect the Dots, and that's been probably the spawn for a lot of things. You know, I'm still putting out music. Um, I've executive produced a, a documentary, docu-series called Rules to This Shit um, with Complex and BET. Um, I was managing Stevie J and Jocelyn at the beginning of their career on Love and Hip Hop. So I was doing that for like five years along with my, my um, partner, Ed Woods, who passed away. He was my attorney. Mm, okay. um, God bless Ed Woods, Reggie Ose. They were my attorneys and, and close friends. So I was doing that for some years and just using my connected dots to book artists when I know on big events. You know, I, I like behind the scenes and I jump out in front when I need to, you know, but I like maneuvering behind the scenes. It's a relationship thing. So, um, you know, um, I'm doing a lot, of, lot more films coming up. So you'll see my name. I produced a film called... Uh, steps that was out with a gentleman named Eddie Harris. So that's how um, that was a produced film that I did. Um, that was like a more heartfelt film about uh, a man's rise and fall. You know what I mean? And then rise again. That's, you know what, that's what Shaquille O'Neal, right? Yes, yes. He executive produced it. So you know, these are the things that I got into just based on. 
Oh, we just lost. <laughs> we just lost D dot. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Get it back on. Get it back on. Yeah, yeah, I don't know what happened there. My, <laughs> bad people, my bad people. I don't know if that was me or y'all. I don't know what happened. I don't know, son. Like, I know you should be cutting us yeah. off. We're trying to interview you, son. We're trying to give you the shine on yeah, here. Why are you yeah, trying to yeah, cut, us, cut us off like that, son? Come on, son. You're not yeah, regular? Yeah. You're not regular? Man, I was in the back like, yo, yo, son, that's enough of that shit, man. Let's get the beat. Let's get the beat. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, so, you know, but I, pre- I appreciate the time, you know, and just, and just, and just, you know, kind of trying to be at the right place at the right time. You know, a lot of it is. A lot of it is experience. A lot of it is luck, too. A lot of it is just planning, you know. So I'm doing films, television, still managing. You know, I just put out a new um, little snack pack for the people. I'm about to drop my project in two weeks called Appreciate the Hate Part 3. I got a couple of new singles out right now, one called Nothing Regular with me. And then I got one with my man Tracy Lee because, you know, that's one of my family oh, members. Attorney so, hold Tracy up, Lee. hold up, hold up, hold up, D-Dot. Tracy Lee, yeah, yeah. Esquire. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. How, right, Howard University, Howard University, once uh-huh. again. Uh-huh. Right, as, absolutely. So Tracy Lee went on to get his law degree. So he's a practicing lawyer, but he's still nice. Mm-hmm. So we still exercise and we still out here working out. Did you so do the, let, let, hold on, did you also do the uh, party time or no? Yes, yes, I produced it. Yes, I produced it. Oh, yes. God, about goodness. That. My goodness. Oh, man. Yes, that was, I was like, and like, that was a great I'm, album, too. One of my favorite yeah, songs me, is Star keep, in the East. Let me keep it real. Like, let me keep it real with you. Like, I be I be sitting back sometimes and, you know, I listened to Bink the other day, give me some love on a radio show. You know, I came out during the era where, you know, if I was a, if I was in this era, I'd probably be 20 times bigger. Because to this day, there are people that just don't know I did certain records because I wasn't worried about somebody saying, D dot, D dot, yo, shout out to, you know, on every record. You know what I'm right. saying? Which is, could be to my detriment. But... It just wasn't, I just didn't concern myself with it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, you know, if if people understood what my catalog was, I know for a fact I wouldn't be getting these con- I wouldn't be getting these questions about how does it feel when your name is not, you know, and all that type of shit. Like, you just, like, did you do the theme? I don't know if Cats knew I did the theme. I don't know if all three of y'all knew it no, or not. No, nah, definitely right. not. So, no, I know. Right. So, so there's, like, a lot of records out there that I produce or wrote. I might have wrote because I'm also a songwriter. So you may have seen my name appear on records, and I might have just wrote it. You know, for example, um, I did a record for um, Jay Holiday and Fat Joe, and it was a few years ago. Baby, I won't tell if you don't yeah, want me yeah. to. Uh, you know, so songwriting credits, you know, on different records that have come out catalog. that I might not have produced. Nah, that's, that's, you, that's, the, that's that nah, catalog. That. It's like catalog. You, right. That's that crazy cat catalog. That's that crazy <laughs> exactly. cat catalog. You know what I mean? Exactly. So, so yeah, so... Trey Lee, and then I got, you know, Smoke Dizza. I, I just kept it with who I rock with. I ain't really reach out to major, major people because the project is not some blockbuster. Everybody's expecting it, man, rapper. These kids have really no clue who I am because it hasn't been around in a while. So this is more a nostalgia thing and just to show cats that I still got it, but then also to introduce my new people. I got new producers, new songwriters, you know, my partner Riz out here in Philadelphia who's a monster on the beach. You know, we got Suzanne Christine, songwriter out here. Lee Mazin, who I rock with out here. She's uh, one of the female MCs. You know, we got a lot of things going on out here. So that's what the the album really does. It keeps me alive for a few more years by introducing a new wave of people that I rock with. You know, because once again, I pride myself on rocking with people and introducing them to the world or being part of something that introduces these people to the world so I can solidify myself in history, 50 Cent. Kanye West, Eminem. Right, because you brought you know out 50 Cent. The locks. Right. You shout, know out to, so, shout out to Onyx, too. But you really was that, that premier yeah. track to really bring 50 Cent out there. How to Rob. He did everybody. He did everybody. <laughs> Damn, you know like, Damn yeah, man. You know we need to link up back up with Charlamagne. We need to link up with Charlamagne. Y'all, y'all producers need to get together. Yes, me and Charlamagne did 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 uh, a lot of joints together. And he did a lot of joints. Just He just came in with, with, a, with, a, with a barrel full of monster meteors. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It was like... So there's no way we couldn't use them. Unfortunately, you know, I just didn't, I just wasn't really focused on the business the way I should have. You know, you young, just doing a lot of things. So I didn't really get a chance to really help those guys flourish. Like we'll, I make, we'll make that you know work. What I'm we'll make that yeah. work. We, huh? connected, yeah. we connected, exactly. so we'll exactly. make that work. Yeah, you're you going to help us flourish too, yeah, son. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we need 85% yeah. though. We need 85% though. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? We need a new Mad Rapper skit, Mad Producer skit. Huh. And a mad radio we'll, people. We'll talk skip. about that later. We'll talk about that. Right, we're gonna, yeah. we're gonna put that out there right now. The mad radio. Now, uh, two two yeah. quick questions before we let you go, yeah. D. Um, yeah. Have you gotten a chance to see the the sneaker exhibit over at the Port Authority yet? 
in New York City. Nah, I, I ain't in New York. I live in Pennsylvania, baby. I'm out. I'm out in the sticks. No, I, I did with like I ain't seen none of that. Okay, He's over there with okay. The bison. Oh, All right. I thought. I mean, you know, I thought you might have passed through and seen it because it's been out for like a month and change. Nah, I haven't. I Shout out to haven't Pennsylvania because the guy that is a is the spearhead of this uh, sneak exhibit. He went to Drexler University. Am I correct? Drexler University. Drexel. Drexel. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely. Yeah. definitely. Yeah. And and, yeah. and my next next question is: Are any one of your uh, children? in any way, shape, or form, either involved or looking to get involved in the entertainment uh, business world or just world in general? Well, I got I got four beautiful daughters. Um, one of my daughters currently, I mean, all of them, you know, they're actually singing on my album. So when you hear the project, I have a song on there with them featured on it because all of them can sing. Um, one of them can rap. Um, but... Right now, currently, only one of them who's in college who goes to Howard University. Shout out to Howard University. <laughs> real um, H.U., real H.U. Uh, my, my daughter, Autumn, is going into her junior year at Howard University. Um, and she is actually in the theater. That's her major. She's been working in the theater and singing and writing and producing. So she is on the path to, you know, um, doing that. So I, don't, I haven't forced none of what I do on them. I ain't make them do nothing. You know, they just all can naturally sing. So my daughter, my youngest daughter, Ava, whose birthday today, happy birthday, Ava. Happy birthday. Um, she, turned, she turned 17 today. My daughter, Ali, who starts college in September. My daughter, Autumn, those three are the singers on the song. And my oldest daughter, Alexis, she's kind of helping me on the hip-hop side with the with the chorus and the hook and all that other stuff. So you got a staff. So, yeah, I got a squad. I got a squad. So, yeah, they, you know, I'm blessed. You know, I'm blessed. Four beautiful children. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Appreciate that. Absolutely. Appreciate now, that. Well, yeah, I'm going to shout y'all out, though. You know, I appreciate the time. Y'all keep grinding out there. Shout out to everybody listening. Keep listening to the show. You know what I mean? These dudes are showing love, and that's what we got to do more to each other. Everybody from the from the A-list to the D-list, you know what I'm saying? We got to we gotta show everybody some love because in a minute we're going to all be in the same boat with all this Trump shit going on, you know what I mean? So <laughs> we got to team up now. Arm yourselves, read some books, get some knowledge, and show some love, mm. you know what I mean? Absolutely, absolutely. And where can people uh, get more information as far as like what you're doing, your projects and all that, like all your social media and so forth, if you're on that? I mean, I'm just D.Angeletti. Um, you got to figure out how to spell it. It's a long name. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Google. But Google, at, son. At D. Angeletti is pretty much everything. You'll see all my pages, all the links to all my shows, my, 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 my Wikipedia, my music, everything that's there, you'll be able to see it all. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, we, we thank you for uh, taking time out and uh, joining us on the program, man. We definitely appreciate you and in, in all the things that you put down and contributed to music and to Lessons. the art of hip hop, which Definitely. you know, send me some sneakers. I wear eight, eight and a half. You know what I'm saying? Depending on how they cut. And I, I, no, bro, my, she said depending on how they cut. You know what I'm saying? You got that my triple E, that wide E. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Son? What kind of perks is this? You know what I'm saying? I need some perks, man. What the Yo, fuck we got man? our man right here. He's gonna give you the, the tilling high. I've been cursing you, like crazy. You just bro, did. You just, yeah, you, you been cursing, so. <laughs> <laughs> You gonna get the yeah, Tillin' yeah, High read, family hookup from uh, Sean Williams, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. We gonna get you the not, not a lot of colors though. I need like some plain. You know what I mean? I ain't with all. Hey, the, oh, he's really in, colors, he's really out there in the sticks. Hey, hey, yo, all son, right. we gonna get you the 1989 Special Ed Tilden um, <laughs> sneaker collection. You're gonna have it made. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Peace, peace. Peace, son. Respect, all right. Respect. Let's Absolutely. get that as a regular. How about that? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, which yeah. record? Nothing regular. Yeah, we're going to do that yeah, nothing regular, regular for you. Definitely, definitely. That's love. All right, D. That's love, baby. Yes, One indeed. love. Peace. Peace. It's Thermal Sound Waves, the natural alternative to fast food radio. Thermal Sound Waves, wave.